We're very honored to be a member of MediaX uh, since last year, and uh, we really like this opportunity to share our ideas uh, about you know, our thinking around how do we build education communities around the uh, AI. Yeah. So normally, you know, this talk takes uh, uh, you know, a little bit longer. So actually, I'm going to cut off uh, some of the more technical part of it. And then focusing really on answering the question is that, you know, how do we want the AI technology to, I would say, interrupt the whole education enterprise? And here, if you look, if you look at the, the whole understanding of education in a community way, there are, I would think there's two big pieces of that. One is that how the education is conducted, and the other part is that, you know, what are the resources and what are the things coming into that process? Right, so we look at that almost like an engineering problem. How do we solve that problem is transfer knowledge from you know, either a central community of uh, researchers or teachers to the student who really need that. And what we see is that uh, the future for the education technology is not just follow the original footsteps of the, what we call a factory model of education, but really to engage in a very different way. And that is where AI comes in. So when we look at that, we see there are two key things uh, from the AI's perspective, right? Why do we really even want to use AI in education? And what are the roles and what are the key processes that enable that? So if you look at the traditional way of uh, you know, uh, how technology, AI is part of that, is applied to education, we look at their, like a, this is a, this model um, where we're talking about the different type of impact that education is impacted by technology such as AI. There are four levels. The first level is what we call substitution. Uh, and the second level is augmentation. The third level is modification. And the fourth level is redefinition, right? And what we see is that AI in that process need to play a role of redefinition. And that is our um, whole promise of our whole company, and also that how we approach this problem. So why do we do that, right? So if you think about the traditional way of education, it's pretty much a broadcast type of model, right? A teacher, you know, sit in front of the a classroom or stand in front of a classroom and then basically broadcast the knowledge, and then, you know, the, the students receive that in a very, I would say, consistent way, because you know, the single teacher is sitting in the same type of speed for everyone, right? So whoever is listening to that is gonna receive that pretty much you know, passively. And also, in terms of the receiver, no matter where their starting state, or no matter where their you know, difficulty or their uh, learning speed and so forth, they're going to get the same information in the same way, pretty much. And we see that as a not a very effective way of learning. We see that the true education probably should be done in a much more active way, where you're gonna receive a lot of feedback. Also, the speed of the delivery of the knowledge need to be corresponding to what the student needs, right? So that is going to be a very different model. We call that it's a learner-centric model. Um, and traditionally, it's this teacher or content-centric model, right? So that's why we see a lot of inefficiencies. And also, not only inefficiency, but also the way the content are delivered are mostly constructing almost like a cookie cutter way. So pretty much, you're trying to make everybody the same, right? And that's it's actually a good thing for a, like a military or for a traditional like a factory where the workers need to have pretty much the same base knowledge and their, their working is very consistent. But in the new economy, that doesn't work anymore, right? Because that everybody, we actually, we care more about creativity. We care more about, you know, how do we complement each other rather than just being the same. So that's why we see a revolution of education that need to be happening. And we see the AI is playing a big role in there. Uh, so this is what our belief is. We believe that the true education should be done in, almost like in a tutor way, uh, like a one-to-one -one tutor way. It needs to be continuously adaptive, one-on-one, -on -one, 
because everybody is different. And also the human teacher should play more of a role a coach rather than a, just a deliverer of content. And that we see that they're providing better role in helping to create a community of education rather than just being a, you know, like a, a videotape or, or like a, a uh, you know, audio tape uh, recorder. So, so the way that you know, we approach is that is that if you look at it on the right-hand side, that's the traditional way of teaching and learning, and the left-hand side is our way of teaching and learning. So you can see that you know, we want to change from that factory model into a more one-on-one a -on -one model. And we also we want to change the traditional learning analytics and how information are gathered about the learning process and make that much more actionable. And also we want to change the role of the human instructor, right? So that's the, our, you know, our way is that we want to have a personalized, adaptive, continuous uh, process for the learning. We want the, uh, the analytics to be contextual and also actionable. And also we want the human to be a uh, teacher to become the head coach and AI become the uh, minions or the assistant you know, for that head coach. And how do we do that, right? So we look at the way that we're using AI because the reason the traditional model works is the fundamentally we don't have that many teachers and we cannot afford a single teacher for a single student. I mean, economically, that doesn't work. Time-wise, it doesn't work. And also, you know, that's, that's a way that it's just not going to be very scalable. It was working for people like, you know, the Alexander the Great, you know, or people like, you know, who, who, are, who have a lot of money at their disposal, who can hire the best teacher to serve their need. And that is working well, right? I mean, for, you know, Alexander the Great, you know, I think, you know, that, that's, that's a perfect model of how that's working. But we don't have all these kings. Uh, we have a lot of uh, kids who are actually in this community where the, the people who actually need the most about this type of instruction are the people who are the poorest and lacking, the, you know, uh, lagging behind, right? So, so the way that we look at it, that we believe uh, the, uh, the AI is going to play in a role where we're having this, what we call the four components of AI that can contribute to that and basically creating a new learning paradigm uh, that is basing on the AI playing a larger role in that teaching and learning process. Um, so, so here, I'm not going to dwell into the AI part of it. This is you know, how we see AI is playing that role. You, know, you need the business model. You need the AI expertise to do that and also need a lot of data and contextual data. And also, you will need a lot of computing power. I mean, so those are actually ready. And we see that it's going to really interrupt the education paradigm uh, in the future. So we believe every student deserves a one-to-one -one intelligent adaptive tutor who will make the learning more efficient, more effective, and also more engaging. So, so here is, uh, I'm, I'm going to quickly go through this chart, is that if you see that the way that we look at it, how student learns is that we know that every student coming with a different starting point, coming with very different learning speed and learning uh, you know, how they acquire knowledge, right? So you see this is a diagram where it shows that even for the same knowledge point, like each student is, uh, is taking very different times. And the way that we're going to approach that is that we build this process where we want to take the process uh, and, and kind of like turn it upside down, right? We want the AI to perform three steps. The first step is diagnosis. The second step is recommendation. And the third, third step is interaction, right? So if you look at this model, the first two steps is happening at a, what we call an outer loop, outer loop adaptivity. And the third step is in the inner loop adaptivity. So in both inner loop and outer loop, the AI is going to basically diagnose the student, understanding what their weakness and what they need the most, and recommend a uh, personalized learning pathway as well as content for that student. And, the, and, and once that recommendation is done and then go into the detail, and then you can actually approach that uh, student 
and giving them more targeted uh, remedi uh, remediation and uh, support. So I'm not going to the diagrams for those architectures and so forth. We can definitely take that offline if people are interested. And the way that we're approaching that, uh, we're using different machine learning models and the AI techniques in different levels. Uh, on the outer loop, uh, we're using a lot of the knowledge graph based uh, adaptivity. And, and also in the, um, and also we're using contextual uh, model model integrated uh, behavior analysis to help us to understanding the student learning state as well as what is optimal timing for them. And also we are using the inner loop adaptivity uh, uh, using cognitive uh, simulations and collaborative design, right? Because we think that we really want to give the time back to the student so that they can engage in more meaningful and more productive type of learning, right? Those are the, the learning like a project-based learning or challenge-based learning, where currently the students don't have those time, right? Because their time are all burned, especially in K-12, learning those kind of like what we call knowledge, right? And, and that is, we see that is not adequate, and they should be actually taking a lot shorter time acquiring those by using AI in a one-to-one -one way and getting the time back and then be able to support them to do more meaningful social-based, collaborative-based, uh, and also challenge-based learning. And there's two examples. One, we're using a VPA, which is the, a, uh, a uh, we call it a virtual personalized assistant. It's a dialogue-based agent that helps diagnose students' uh, mistake reasons. And also we have another project uh, using uh, MIBA, it's a model model integrated behavior analysis to help to, uh, to give student and teacher the alert and say when should the, the human coach should intervene in this process. Um, so how does it work? I mean, it's, it's doing pretty well. We have done four, uh, four rounds of uh, human versus AI competition and every time we did pretty good. And then we also have, um, you know, from a company per perspective, we grow like uh, 5,000 times over the last two years. Uh, I mean, 5,000% uh, growth, in, uh, compound growth in the last two years. Uh, we started uh, uh, with, uh, you know, a single learning center in 2016. Now we have more than 1,800 learning centers uh, in, in China in the K-12 after school market. And we are... Also, um, want to give that back to the, you know, the learning community as well as the whole education industry. So we're doing a lot of collaborations uh, for, with top international institutions. Uh, we also are very actively, uh, actively engaged in the standardization, data sharing, and open platform initiatives. And we also want to uh, share and collect and, and build together with you guys uh, you know, about the data and how to use those data. And here are some of our research partners. Uh, you know, this is a short list of them. Uh, again, uh, MediaX is definitely uh, one of the uh, partners and we want to engage more with uh, Stanford University. So let me uh, do a little bit of a summary of this talk. Um, so we definitely think that uh, we are actually using like a lot of uh, techniques like deep learning and so forth. But deep learning actually is not adequate uh, and also it's not a very good fit for a lot of learning tasks and machine learning that we're using. And uh, we need that to go beyond just the, uh, you know, the perception part of it and got to be more understanding and reasoning. And small data actually is actually more important in the education space because we don't have like a, a IoT type of device where you have zillions of data. And action, actionable AI is really the key uh, for the next generation. So thank you very much. And we look for a partnership uh, in research, development, standardization, and philanthropy uh, with you guys. Thank you. <laughs>